and and boom and salutations y'all and welcome to number 13 for core office hours we invite you guys to join us from wherever you guys are in the world you know we've got core tribe members in brazil in france in the philippines in mexico in portugal all over the world and we're just glad to have you rocking with us so we are your facilitators in today's adventure um i myself am keone chong we've got the lovely mary gribbon who will be joining us shortly and jose who will be here for a little bit and then be bouncing a little bit early so guys we just want to remind you that this is an experiment in co-creation the work that we're doing here and the information that we're bringing in the value that we're providing for you guys has been built in co-creation and so we are here um because you know we really believe that uh learning core and learning brand strategy is about leadership it's about uh, leadership through design uh and we're really excited for you guys because you guys are the next generation of creative builders um and we really built core and the framework behind it because you know, we we're looking at the future and we really want to redesign the way that world works, the way that we build businesses, the way that we build brands. Um, and part of that is getting back to the human element, the leadership component of it. So uh, today's episode is brought to you, of course, by Brand Discovery Foundations. And if you're interested, uh, and this is the first time that you guys are checking out CORE, uh, we definitely uh, encourage you guys check us out at CORESMagic.com. So as always, we invite you to like and subscribe so we can continue to bring you this awesome, valuable uh, content and community and relationships and understanding of the world uh, and how we can build better brands and companies in the future. So we've got this slide in here, Jose, for the System Podcast. Oh, yes. So the System Podcast is going to be uh, going live on Friday on YouTube, Spotify, Google, etc. Um, and uh, I wanted uh, to share the link privately here with the explicit request uh, for those of you in the community who attended today, you're only getting it in the chat uh, to everyone is to check it out and leave a comment. Like, what did you get out of it? If you watch it, it's 35 minutes. Um, it's the everyone case study. Uh, what did you get out of the, of the conversation? Amy, who uh, was one of the key designers on that project, is here today. She's on the podcast. Check it out. Or on Instagram also, there's a preview. But only here, you're getting a, a, the link. Uh, I just posted it in the chat. Uh, watch it afterwards. That's it. Yeah. Really excited to get your guys' thoughts on it. Um, we worked really hard on it. It's a really exciting story to tell. Um, and it's just... Uh, it's, you know, it's our first like major step towards us building the system. So we do it for y'all. So let's dive into today's agenda. <clears throat> We're going to start as always with a drop in about 15 minutes and how we like to open up this circle of connection. And so in the drop in, we talk a little bit about your name, where you're at, and then the question for today. Then we dive into the download. Download is really about setting the mindset for today's conversation. Um, it's a quote, and it's really meant to really inspire you to kind of open your mind and listen to listen instead of. Well, we can we can skip the download. Uh, today. Okay, I mean, we, we usually don't have download in this one. Okay, so we'll do that. So then we'll just dive in today's theme. And today's theme is community. So what we'll be doing is we'll be having a conversation in regards to branding and strategy. Uh, creative development, design projects, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, how community aligns with uh, some of your strategies, um, maybe any challenges that you're dealing with it. And then we'll have open conversation, uh, open Q&A in regards to any and all things brand strategy and core related. So uh, without further ado, let us dive into the drop-in. So today i'd like for you guys to share and let's start with your name location and uh what are you top uh, i just added the question live what is your biggest core question uh or core win 
So let's start there. And I'll model that for you guys. My name is Keone. I'm located in Los Angeles. And what is my biggest core question or core win? Um, hmm. I can't say, I would like to say this with a core win, but it's more like wins as, a po as opposed to like a singular win. Um, I, you know, over the last several years in my life, my network has really started uh, to open up and I've really been able to connect with some really powerful creatives, designers, leaders, um, political influencers. And a huge component of that is because of core. Uh, core really helped me align myself and my skills and my value. Um, but it also helped me align myself with my community. And so a lot of the opportunities that I'm finding in life, a lot of the really creative um, opportunities that have been presented to myself uh, have really come out of that alignment and understanding. And uh, CORE was instrumental in building that alignment. So for me, it was more like a general win overall um, for myself and my community, for all of these individuals that we have here, you know, that are listening to this conversation. Um, so yeah. You know, that's my drop in. Uh, Jose, would you like to uh, model? No, I'll cede my uh, my seat to the Honorable John, uh, to Dexter. Awesome. Dexter, welcome to the stage. What's happening, everybody? Um, my name is Dexter, currently in Alabama, Tuscaloosa, to be specific. Mm -hmm. um, my biggest core win um i would say i had did core for someone and you know the kind of the way i kind of run core is i kind of you know centralize everything kind of around culture and like building culture so um i remember them hitting me up and saying you know they were onboarding you know no people they had added to the team and they were you know talking about all these cultural things that you know we had developed together and like the people stopping them in bits and it's like let me stop you right there like everything you're saying now is something i'm like i'm all about that like i'm very like i you know being excited about you know being a part of the team you know based off something that we developed together so that was kind of like a sign like yo this is like this is something that's impactful and creating connections and you know bringing people together as part, you know, part of teams that like to really work on something where they're making impact and something they really believe can connect with. So I was like, yo, that's fire. But that's like one of my wins with core. Mm. Awesome, man. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Yes, sir. You know, uh, we've got some folks in the audience, but I, you know, I'd really like to open up this stage and, and get someone, you know, sort of sharing. You know, maybe one of our new folks, maybe Tash, Natasha. <laughs> you don't have to. I'm just inviting folks to the floor. But I'm really excited to hear where you guys are at and, you know, what core has been for you guys and sort of your influence. So while I leave the floor open, you know, I'll read a few from the audience from Jason Chan. Hey, my name is Jason, and I'm in the Midwest of the Midwest. He's in Nebraska. So for him, his biggest core question is how we can help our clients think about their brand traits. He's struggling to help his, his client come up with words to describe their culture, users, and value proposition. Hmm. Good question. You know what? I'll take note of that, and we'll, we'll open that up in the core Q&A. Thank you so much for being with us, brother. Um... We've got Arsenije from Belgrade, Serbia. His biggest core question is, what is the future of branding in the age of decentralization? Ooh, it's a really great one. Thank you for sharing that, man. Would anyone else like to come to the stage? It's open. Love to hear you and just check in with you guys. Yep, 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 yep. Yo, yo. Hey, everybody. This is Cliff uh, coming in from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I haven't quite been as consistent as I wanted to be because uh, unfortunately, I've been kind of busy. Um, I recently gave a talk to some uh, students at Washington State University, which was very cool. 
and I'll be sharing that with everybody soon because we recorded the conversation. But um, a win for me that uh, that I'd like to share is honestly similar to what Keone was saying in Core provided a framework and, and being part of the community has helped me with, with my purpose at this point in my career. Um, just thinking about what it, what it's meant to me and what the community has meant to me over the past year, has that's, that's a win in itself. Um, getting to know Keone better and get, getting to know Jose better uh, that's that's been uh, a real a real addition and benefit to my life. Um, also, I would say that a win for me is Core has given me the confidence. I kind of I, I sound like an infomercial right now, uh, so forgive me forgive me for that. But uh, Core has allowed me the ability to speak confidently on uh, CEO pitch calls with an advertising agency agency that I worked with within the past few months. So. Um, I could definitely feel the confidence being part of that, um, part of that pitch call, and that's been something that's really added value to my life. Awesome! Thank you so much for sharing, Cliff. Uh, really powerful testimony, man. Um, we've got uh, Roxana, and uh, Roxana, where did she go? I just saw your your comments, and she's in Malacor, uh, Spain. And for her, one of her biggest wins uh, it was with no revisions and a collaboration that brings uh, no unpleasant surprises. Love that. It's all about the alignment. Um, Bob, you had a really powerful one. Now, would you like to share? Would you like to drop in? Yeah, happy to, guys. Uh, really glad to be here first time. Mm -hmm. uh, found core and as it happened, no, I'm kind of accelerating my exit strategy out of the nine to five. I work in, in B2B healthcare manufacturing and I, it's just not my, where my passion is, but I was able to help a client on the side and they came to me saying they have a, a nonprofit in London and they're looking to expand into the US. And they said, we're having a real problem communicating our value to high profile donors, uh, to really experienced philanthropists. And they said, but we just wanna, you know, we just wanna brochure. And I had just gone through core and I said, look, I, I was upfront with them. I said, I, you know, I, I haven't done this before, but I'd love to facilitate this workshop with you. And then I quickly found myself uh, off Madison Avenue in this high rise, talking to their team and then developing the roadmap for them and it was just an amazing experience and they were so grateful and they've used that to go on although we split about six months after the delivery of of the other uh collateral mm -hmm. they were able to leverage that and work with another agency to redo their entire website so it was just uh, an amazing experience a whirlwind that i'm still trying to figure out how to how to do that again as soon as possible yeah, that's awesome, man. And thank yeah. you so much for sharing. Was that your first time uh, using brand strategy at all? That Well, that was my first time using Core. I had used brand strategy, but not a formalized process. And it was, it, it gave me everything I needed and then some. Mm -hmm. And I was able to just jump up to a, a different level. And, and like many people here, feel that confidence that you're, you're fully capable of more than you think. And this was just this uh, empowering uh, ability that I, I didn't know I had. Nice, man. Well, hey, man, really glad to see that you're on your journey and glad to have you with us. I'm glad to have you a member of the community, man. Welcome. Yeah, thanks. So uh, we'll do one more. Um, you know, Mark, you know, he shared uh, a little bit. And if you're comfortable, you know, I'd love to have you kind of drop in. Introduce yourself. Hey everyone. Hey, How man. you doing? Great. Right. Yeah, cool. I mean, like I said there in the chat, first time out with Core, it was um, yeah, it was a great experience. Just getting in the room, having that structure to run through all the different exercises was just yeah, it was super slick. It was professional and really high engagement with the people in the room. So it was yeah, it was just Kind of um, 
mind blowing how something that looked so simple on the page brought out so much in the people that I was presenting it to. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was great. Well, Mark, you know, glad to have you here. Is this your first time? Sorry. Yeah, nice. first time here. Yeah, in the in the in the thing that we're doing now. Yeah. Nice man. Nice. How did you find out about us? Uh, so I found you guys on the future. So you know, I bought the core um, process or whatever the course uh, about a year ago. Um, and yeah, I've only done it a couple of times, but each time it's been brilliant. And yeah, I love it. I want to do more of it. So yeah, yeah it's cool. Beautiful, man. Um, one last question. Where are you calling us from? Where are you checking in from? Can't tell by the accent. <laughs> Across the pond, perhaps? Yeah. <laughs> Bristol, England. Welcome, man. Glad to have you join us. Yeah, good people. Good. And then for our last drop in, we'll have Jaja. Jaja. What's up, girl? Hi, everyone. Hi, Mark. I'm from the UK as well. Um, welcome to the family. Um, so, the core cool win for me is that uh, I think last month was the first time that I used a core. Um, the client was really happy about everything and managed to give the name to the to the brand and give a ton of voice to the brand and today my current client just introduced me to another client because of the outcome of the core mm. so yeah I'm super inspired I'm super excited about that um, and also core helped me to get to know who I want to do as a business because I started my business about five months ago. So I'm still on the journey of finding out what is my business purpose, which I use support of to sort of figure out. And um, so for me is that I want to create a business that is a force for good, right? I want to work with people with the same value as me. I want, I only want to work with people who and business is who do good for the planet, for the humankind. Um, now, I guess I have a question as well, that how do I attract the clients like the clients that share the same value as me? So that's me. Thank you. Awesome. And let me just tag that. How do I? Some interesting questions already, you know, the future of branding in a context of decentralization from our synergy. And then the question of how do you tie uh, design brand strategy to marketing and to revenue? Um, those are like some pretty powerful questions already. Yeah, man. Um, I'm actually really excited to, you know, to dive into uh, some of these questions. Uh, but let's, let, you know, let's talk a little bit about our theme for today's week. Um, you and I, Jose, and then let's just leave the rest of this session open for Q&A. How's that sound? Yeah, I added some slides, which would be, uh, I added um, my personal core uh, user profiles or co-creator profiles from uh, two years ago when we did this experiment where we asked the question, like, if you did core for yourself, uh, what would that look like and how would it help you? So Jaja, you just asked the question, um, how do you align your own values with that of your customers? So the the reason I wanted to share the slides and Keone, if you can bring them up real quick, yep. because the theme is community. Um, what I discovered when I started my first YouTube uh, endeavor uh, many, many years ago in 2013, I did core on air for the show. And, um, and I talked about who the customer profiles were and people in the comments and YouTube were like, oh my God, that's totally me. Um, so the community self-identified by, by doing the customer profiles in front of the community itself, because it was a live show. So we were basically facilitating core, the, 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 the customer profile exercises, all of the exercises mm -hmm. live on YouTube, you know, with people in the audience. So that was the, the first experience I had in the ability to create, and Kenny, can you lower the volume just a little bit? I don't, I don't have my headphones on, but maybe I should put them on. Um, the, the results of that 
was traction because people were like, yes, that's me. And then I kept on repeating it in the different um, uh, things that I was doing, whether it was, you know, doing a workshop, whether it was uh, whatever it was, speaking at a conference. So if you go to the profiles, one thing that you're going to notice, because we've just finished doing the hero's journey on our design therapy, is that the arc, the narrative arc that we added, that I added to the current core, and a lot of people ask with confusion, why is it structured this way? Like the past you, foundational you, you now, then you in transition, and you at the end, right? I was using the hero's journey as a, mm -hmm. as a model for you to be able to get customers who are new, right? Who just found out about you. So it might be you in the past. Customers who now know you a little bit, and then customers that are now successful because of you. So, so if you look at the transformational leader, create a YouTube channel, transformational conference, global workshops and events, that's Mauro, that's Cliff. I mean, neither Mauro or Cliff are a peppy blonde person, but, uh, or a woman, but that is them, right? Uh, James de Mendoza, again, these are composites of real people. Um, I, I was, if you can see the picture there in the middle, I was in transition, you know, I was just figuring out what to do next. Um, uh, I had left consensus in New York after leaving the school. Um, so I was figuring things out. And one of the things I was doing was experimenting with my own identity and learning about myself. So growing my hair long, which I had never done before, was about, you know, countering my uh, aunts and like las, las, las doñas en la comunidad in the Dominican Republic, who would be like, when I grew my hair out, they were like, oh my God, you have bad hair. Bad hair? What the heck? What's wrong with my hair? Uh, so I said, you know, F it, I'm going to grow my hair. But then I went to Costa Rica and the thing I heard resoundingly from the designers in Costa Rica, Costa Rica, Costa Rica was that they wanted to make their work meaningful, that just working for clients in the United States and, you know, getting paid was great, but they wanted more than that. They wanted to do their own local businesses. They wanted to do their own online ideas. They wanted to podcast. They wanted to. And that's Alex Sorrita, that's Roxana, that's everybody here who has a podcast or who wants to make their work more meaningful. The fact that I made him black and Latino, you know, is about my Afro-Caribbean, you know, kind of, it's me in the past, channeling fully like my great grandfather and, you know, my ancestors, you know, who were black. And now it's not coincidence, you know, that our community is so diverse and that what we've been growing is a very, uh, intersectional kind of uh, swath of, of our community. Um, and then finally, you know, the, the master teacher, Georgia Thompson, a safe space to grow, not to feel alone, a way to be sustainable. That's actually based on somebody on a real person and who's actually here. You know, that's who I was thinking of when I was thinking of, of Georgia uh, Thompson, the master teacher, because I see her as, as someone who can become a master teacher to her community with what she knows and who she is. Uh, and then, you know, the Clara Chang, half white, half Asian um, leadership was the thing that she was literally working to do, to do. Again, that's based on a real person, but nonetheless, it's, it's all um, the, the, the seed, the seed of the manifestation of what you want to build. So if you have a question of like your customers, Jaja, spend time creating your customer profiles, your co-creator profiles. But more importantly, talk with them and, and then really get to know them um, and then validate it with them. Is this you? That's why we don't use real names, right? Because if you don't want to show up with the real name and say, hey, this is based on you. That would be really awkward. The final thing I'll say, and I, and I will stop, is you know the question of marketing and revenue. If you look at marketing programs, ultimately, they're trying to find like a, a campaign, pillars, messages that are really tied to the value proposition. And remember that the, the brand statement gives you, you know, uh, impact and, and, and the emotional aspects, but also gives you impact. You can create based on the needs of the customers, you know, the value proposition. Core helps make your work meaningful. This, the system is a safe space to grow. You know, we are here to heal in community. We're here to learn leadership. Yes, all on YouTube, because this is where this is being rebroadcast. All I did was just read the needs from each of these user profiles or these customer segments. And if it resonates with you, you know, then it's because you are and we are, right? So, so marketing is scaling that. So the campaigns have to, you know, say, 
you know, find a safe space to grow and we do a bunch of ads, come to our community or people need to spread that. That's the, the word of mouth and the, and the, and, and that aspect. What ends up happening is that we get, can, designers get a little bit overwhelmed when CMOs and marketing teams put numbers, you know, we need to increase our social media by 50% we need to do all those things. Uh, we need to, there is a number based on uh, the conversion rate on the number of people that reach your content leads to revenue depending on the price of your products and on your distribution. So you need to start understanding for the businesses that you're working for by asking the question to your customers, how do I, you know, uh, what those numbers are, what their challenges are, et cetera. But the most important way for you to learn that, and I'm, I'm saying this because I've done it, uh, you see that I'm switching from advice to, but I'm telling you the story. I actually started playing with how for my agency, our email newsletter, based on the customer profiles of our customers and on the topics that they wanted to hear, translated into leads. And then we tracked it by saying, how did you find out about us? Which Keone just said here. And we found out where they, you know, oh, we found out from your newsletter or most cases, 95% was we were referred to you by someone. So if the agency model is really referral, if you know how your content impacts leads, if you understand how your messaging and your narrow, you know, kind of like focus on a value proposition to a potential, to a customer type works because you did it for yourself, is it easier now to engage and interact with a CMO or with a marketing person, marketing director, marketing team member on, your, on the client side or with the founder of your working with a solopreneur it is so doing it for yourself and making those experiments work does like wonders for it so that's that that's my we're building community using core you're here because you were manifested as a co-creator profile so yeah mm. well thank you so much that is absolutely amazing and i think that answers it and i'm just going to go ahead and really stand on my ground as what i'm believing and just start to build the customer profiles who i want to work with and just do baby steps bit by bit thank you that's the path you know like um you know what was really interesting to me when i first came to core you know jose was like oh you've been doing core your entire life man like you you've already been doing it and I remember the first time you told me that, I was like, uh, I don't think so. Um, but, you know, for me, from a personal experience, you know, here's my relationship to to CORE. Um, and Michael, we'll, we'll bring you on board as soon as I just add this little anecdote. You know, like growing up, I grew up, so I, I come from, you know, I'm first generation. My parents are Caribbean. My father ethnically is Cantonese. And my mother um, is probably like a little bit of, uh, indigenous Taino and, and Jamaican. And so growing up in America, I struggled with the ability to connect like with kids, my peers, the whole nine, because culturally I had such different values. And in the household that I was raised, I wasn't allowed to really access media. So television, we only really watched like on Sundays, which would be like opera and, and 60 minutes. And maybe my dad throughout the week would sneak in maybe some in living color and like Star Trek, right? That was my life. So I wasn't listening to radio. Like I was just reading a bunch of sci-fi and comic books were really my intro into any kind of experience that I shared with my peers. Now, because I couldn't build relationships with them because I didn't have different values or even the language to communicate, what I started doing as a kid was I would look at the groups of individuals and I'd be like, ah, they all wear this shoe or they're all wearing these kinds of brands. They're all listening to this kind of music. Here are the activities that all of them are doing. And I didn't realize it at the time, but I was building these profiles around the communities and based on what people do and the behavior patterns that they do socially, you can get a really strong feel for who they are. And then when you understand who someone else and you have deep understanding for yourself, you can then make that bridge authentically. You can step into those conversations and you can have real like value add to them because you you're coming from the same values your curiosities are the same the knowledge and the topics that you guys are are curious about are the same and so those kind of relationships just happen organically and naturally 
So that was the way that I interpreted this. Um, and I hope that it helps you guys understand the importance of really being able to identify who you want to co-create with, right? What are the kinds of brands that you want to work with? What kind of creatives do you want to work with, right? What kind of leaders inspire you that you would love to work alongside, right? When you can identify those things and sort of shift your energies, then you're stacking the deck in for success. And that's what we really want to help you guys do is find success. Thank you. So, yeah, what's up, brother? Is it okay if I add just something real quick to what you just said? Sure can. Um, so before I became a part of the the core tribe community, I, I don't think I had a formed idea or sense of how much personal transformation um, influenced uh, career transformation or professional uh, transformation. Mm -hmm. um, I was kind of like I had a roundabout idea about it, but um, I think for the longest time, maybe I didn't realize that because um, internally, internally not progressing or opening myself up to certain experiences was closing myself down uh, professionally to getting to uh, a, a better place or to a different place. So I think that was uh, something I wanted to share that the community has given me too. And how my story kind of relates to yours in a certain sense, um, like starting to bring down walls in a way that opens me up to hearing other people. I've, like I've had people in my life, you and this the woman I used to work with at Hot 97, where they helped me a lot. They allowed me space to be able to bring down certain walls to open, open myself up to new uh, possibilities. Mm. You nailed it, brother. I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, Michael. I know that you had your hand raised. Would you like to come up to the stage and share? Well, I actually um, hit that by accident. So uh, sorry about that. <laughs> well, hey, man, glad to have you here, man, either way. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, do we have any other questions, you know, or comments related to this topic of community? You know, um, we really just want to, you know, give you guys a little bit of the principles. Uh, community is a huge component of core as a framework. Um, you know, what we're really trying, what core really presents uh, in, in a really unique way is this, is this framework for understanding and uh, starting to build relationships between individuals. Um, it's very much human skills as much as it is branding and marketing and designing skills, right? Um, it, it, it's very much a, a, an exercise in uh, being able to align vision, uh, to understand values, um, and then to collaboratively, co collaboratively build together towards a shared vision. So, um, so yeah, with that said, uh, let's dive into the core Q and A, and let's talk a little bit about some of the questions and concerns that we've had. And um, you know, for those of you guys that have questions, the chat is open. Um, I'm going to try to capture everything that I can, all the questions that are submitted. Um, then I've got a list of some existing questions, so I'll dive into some of those as well. So let's start with. Let me pull up my notes. Um, Here we go. Let's start with this first one. How do I connect with clients that share the same value as me? Um, and hopefully we answer that in our principles or, or in the conversation around one of our principles behind community. But uh, let me just recap this and I'll share from my perspective. Um, my ability to connect with clients that share the same value as me started with me being able to understand my story and then to share my story transparently, just openly. Hey, I'm Keone. I'm an Afrofuturist. Uh, I believe I believe in uh, cultural creatives, uh, really being able to design products and services of the future. Uh, I believe that they need to have leadership roles in organizations, um, and I believe that they need to be uh, looked at as on par as CMOs, CTOs, CFOs, um, et cetera, right? Really, really simple. That's my story. And the more that I share it, the more that individuals can understand and say, hey, you know what? I have those same values. You know what? I might want to have a conversation with him. 
Uh, and it's really about being able to broadcast your truth. Uh, it's about being able to broadcast your expertise, your skill, uh, your talent, and, and to be able to tell that in a story uh, that individuals can resonate with. And as we are starting to understand, we resonate with authenticity. We resonate with honesty and transparency. We resonate with the flaws. Right. Uh, you know, there was a big uproar on social media around Instagram a couple of years back when there was this huge shift in uh, photography style. It went from this super pristine, perfect photography style to stuff that was a little bit more grungy, stuff that showed the flaws. Uh, that was really about this same uh, aspect of storytelling. It's not about how perfect the story is. What, what it is, is what are the what are the bumps and bruises that you learned along the way? Right? What are the scars that gave you uh, deeper understanding, right? That really gave you wisdom because you got burned a little bit, right? Like all of those kinds of elements in our story are super important to tell. And that's what, our, that's what we resonate with. We want to connect with humans. We want to hear human stories, not perfectly, you know, uh, beautiful stories with every pixel in place and no challenges at all, just continued growth. That's not real. And I think what we're looking for is the ability to connect with people honestly and transparently. So yeah, uh, would anybody else like to comment on that? How to connect with clients that share the same values? Uh, Mato, would you like to step to the mic and share? Because you had a powerful share a couple weeks ago. Hey guys. Hey, sorry, <laughs> you cut me uh, a little bit. Um, Worries. Okay, can you repeat the question one more time? Yeah. So the question is, um, how do I connect with clients that share the same values as me? In okay, uh, I think it really depends on the on the, on the context of where you want to connect and. Uh, I think, as a matter of fact, um, I'm I'm doing that right now with another brand here in Ensenada, uh, with a brewery. Mm -hmm. I know I have this relationship with uh, with someone from Corvus, um, but now, you know, I've been developing this this really interesting uh, friendship with this uh, this guy from this brewery here in Ensenada. They're called Chiquilla, and really. This has started because we shared a lot of the same the same values, just like you mentioned, right? Um, mm -hmm. We want to work collaboratively. They have a lot of different um, projects happening and, and stuff that's really interesting. And where I started to come in was to really, was like, this is the stuff, you know, I'm telling them, this stuff is really amazing. You guys are doing something really interesting, something that's really different. Um, how are you guys organizing yourselves? How are you guys uh, managing all these different things and these priorities? Uh, and, you know, we have been developing this, this really interesting dynamic where I'm helping them really identify the problems that they have, uh, some of the, the downfalls, and I've been able to, okay, like, kind of settle, settle the dust uh, in, in a way and to really, okay, let's how about we refocus on what you guys are working on and let me help you uh, through my experiences that I've had with all these other clients, the other, other projects mm -hmm. and, and give you a different perspective. And that comes with a lot of respect of them understanding what I've done, how I work, uh, the way that I, that I carry myself, the, that I, the way that I speak. And, you know, I think it's, that's really, that's really telling when you find somebody who you can have their relationship, you really understand and you really connect with. Um, you know, I think I, I always approach from the perspective of like really trying to help from a very selfless uh, place. Yeah. Whereas like, I'm not charging them, I'm not, you know, being bold. If you pay me, you know, I'll, I'll help you out. It's like, I, I really want to be able to, to give something and to like, here, let me, let me take you by the hand and then we can we can talk about you know work and conversation some other time. Let me show you what I can do for you 
uh, how how I can help you. And if you guys you know don't want to collaborate later, that's totally fine. I'm I feel good about giving giving this and being able to continue. Uh, you know something that's very sort of casual in a way. Mm. I love that share, man. And thank you so much for sharing that. Um, of course. Yeah. I hope that you know the folks in our audience can can take a little bit away from that. You know, I'd I'd like to add some insight into that and kind of expand that a little bit. <clears throat> I think that when we are able to speak our truth to be able to live in our values with authenticity and transparency. Hey, I'm this way because of, I love this kind of music because of, I love this design because of, these kinds of brands or these kind of business structures are exciting to me because of, right? When we can share those stories authentic, authentically, the individuals that we can connect with, right? That, re that our ability to understand who they are at a fundamental level and build these authentic relationships are super important. And they're validated in the way that you're able to expand your network, right? When you, I've realized that the deeper relationships that I have with clients, the more likely they are to refer me. And it got to a point where for maybe 70% of our revenue, you know, and for full transparency, Model used to be a business partner of mine. We were partners together. We was going through, you know, fighting you know fighting the clients you know with all of our brand ideas ah no the logo doesn't need to be bigger right like we, you, <laughs> and me yeah right uh you know because there's 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 conflict even within the partnerships even within the relationships the leaderships the processes all of these things are super important you know mar and i we went, no worries man uh you know we went through the the, the dissolution and then the the coming back together, right? Like, and that was like the validation of our values, right? The network that we expanded, the clients that we have. Um, and I think that we all, all of us, you know, who have experienced some sort of referral can look at that referral and be like, why did they refer me, right? The work that you did for them is really just the validation of who you are. But there's a personal level, there's a personal undercurrent that is super important. Um, you know, Cliff brings it up all the time. Personal development is business development, right? The better relationship you can have with yourself, the better relationship you can have with other individuals. But I don't want to belabor this particular question too much. Um, let's dive to some of the other topics, uh, unless anybody else would like to uh, add. Okay. So let's move on to the next question. Um, this one came from Jason. And the question goes like this, how can we help our clients think about their brand attributes and their traits? I'm struggling to help my client come up with words to help describe their culture, users, and value proposition. Mm, this is really good. I feel this is a little bit more tactical, but uh, before I provide any kind of impact or, or, or ideas or anecdotes, I'd like to open up the floor. Oh. And again, the question is, I'm struggling to help my client come up with words to describe their culture, users, and value proposition. So, so the question there for me is, you know, is the struggle uh, in the session or is it after the session or is it uh, vocabulary? One secret about core is that the adjectives, their descriptive words are inside stories, right? So instead of like prompting them to come up with words, you can like, you know, for culture, for example, you can ask, tell me a little bit about your parents. Tell me a little bit about when you grew up and people will say, you know, well, I, I would say uh, I'm the son of a pastor. My mom was a biologist and a teacher at university. Um, my grandmother actually started one of the largest Seventh-day Adventist schools in um, the Dominican Republic, um, you know, when she was very young. So education has always been in her, you know, education, science, and preaching, all right, there's already three attributes of my culture. 
that's super easy, right? When you just anchor it, when you move on to the next exercise, you know, things like impact uh, and things like, so how does this brand make you feel? Imagine the brand was, you know, food. How would it make you feel? Imagine the brand was, you always need to give them context uh, so that they uh, can give you words and so that you can come up with words. One context for the impact is, you know, time and money. Like, does it save you time? Does it make you money? Does it give community? Those are really the most measurable things that you can do. If the impact is that, you know, the, 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 the brand, the idea, the, the product uh, grows your community or grows, you know, awareness or whatever it might be. Let's say community. It connects people. Great. That's impact connection. Um, because of it being X, Y, Z, people buy it a lot. That means you grow revenue. So already it's a revenue impact. And even sometimes you go a little bit un intangible for, for impact, you know, it's like help save the world, you know, save the environment, um, uh, provide, you know, education to the community. Even those things are okay in impact. So, so the stories always have, the words in them so instead of prompting for words if you're at a loss prompt for the story i hope that helps yeah i love that share thank you jose um you know i'd like to ask anyone else you know in the audience uh, when you're facilitating core you know in your experience of facilitating the attributes exercise like how are there any tactics that you guys have Anything that you can suggest? You know me? Yeah, um, what's up, Cliff? I can kind of speak to the most recent client that I'm working with right now. Um, she's building a uh, platform online uh, for upstate New York, artists in upstate New York to be able to connect with the community, um, to be able to show their work and possibly even sell their work. So when we were in the brand attributes section of, of, the, of our process, similar to what Jose said, she had an issue coming up with ad adjectives. And also similar to what Jose was saying, I was asking her to picture the attributes exercise in the context of her own life because there's a through line between who she is and what she wants for her life and her career to what is gonna be expressed through her organization. And once she understood that, that's when everything started to come out, pour out very easily for her. So actually, once she understood that, that's the fastest I've kind of gone through a brand attribute exercise with anyone um letting her know that not that there's no difference but um it's very much related to what she's trying to do within her life finding out that um on one end she wants to be able to devote a lot of time to this group of connecting artists and kind of having that be the the mission statement of her life uh for when i started to map out her future self and being able to be a kind of art administrator consultant so mm, i love that share you know, um, you know, it's, it's always, and this is how I feel about it. You know, like whenever I facilitate, I always feel like I'm a therapist as opposed to like someone that's more like a designer or business strategy, because I've fundamentally believe that generally speaking, the clients have all of the answers. What they don't have is the language and, and the process to be able to articulate what it is that they truly see or what they truly understand. And so, um, you know, I'm always thinking about a cultural aspect uh, when I think about brand. So when I get to the attributes, you know, and I'm asking them about what are the things that inspire them? What are the things that are really powerful um, to them? What are the things that they admire, right? Are they people? Are they products? Are they things? What is it about those things that they admire? What is it about these people that really resonate with them? Is it a characteristic? Tell me more about that characteristic, right? So I like to look at it from a very high approach, which is cultural expression. So our typical cultural expressions are language, um, it's food, it's, um, it's fashion and how we design ourselves, it's uh, media, so it's music um, and video. Uh, and then it's like behaviors, right? It's like we tango or, you know, we do Shabbat on Fridays, right? There's some sort of cultural behavior. And generally what I'll do is I'll be like, well, what are the things that you like to do? And we'll start there. And I look at that as a cultural reference. And I said, well, what is it about that that makes it so important to you? 
right? Sunday dinners with your family, right? What is it about Sunday dinners? Is it family? Is it community? Ah, right? So here are some of the values you have. You, you value deep relationships. You value community. You value being able to look at somebody in the eye and have an off like an honest, authentic conversation with them and connect at that level. You value deep relationships, right? Like that's how I break down the insights. And this is for me, you know, like I, I, I have a little bit of a background in uh, anthropology from college. Um, we talk about Edic and Emic perspective, Edic Emic gang represent. <laughs> but you know, the truth of the matter is it's, it's really up to your interpretation, right? Like what skills do you have in understanding people um, and being able to understand the values and to be able to see the values and, and attributes of a culture through your own lens, right? Through your own expertise, right? Find a way to be able to process in that way. And that, and it doesn't, it takes time, you know, for some people, they may be able to just knock it out of the box, but for other people, it takes time. So understand that it's a process. It's not about becoming perfect. It's just about getting better for the next facilitation. Right. And lastly, but definitely not least, if you have a little bit of a feel for the client and you know that this is maybe part of your facilitation skill set that you're weak in, do a little pre prep. You know, sit down, look at the brand, run through the exercise for yourself. Right. Come up with values or, or attributes or elements that you think are important and like use them as conversation starters. So when you dive in, Give your client the space to give you feedback and say, what about this? Have you thought about this? Or have you thought about that? Use those as prompts to help spark the conversation. The deeper the conversation, the better the output. So how was that for you, Jason? Did that provide clarity? Yes, definitely. Uh, I guess I was just struggling because they were coming out with very dry words. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they just uh, wouldn't budge, even with the, how I described them. And I was firstly going to go down the route of asking, like, what's a North Star for the company that you really aspire to be? Like Apple or something like that. How would you describe them? Like, what do you like about them? What is it that, about them that inspires you? And then I was going to use those as prompts. But um, I definitely love what you guys were talking about. So I, I took a lot of notes. Thanks. Yeah. You know, and also another thing that I do, and this will be, you know, this is my last, you know, pro tip is, I don't force them to have to put it necessarily in a word. You know, if they can capture like the essence of what it is that they're trying to say or mean, but it's like a phrase, just write the phrase, right? Think about it later. Like when you go through and when you reprocess, like generally I'll like to facilitate. And then what I like to do is a couple hours afterwards, after it's, it's sunk in a little bit, I just do a review and I just walk through, through you know, the, the, the core facilitation. And in walking through the facilitation, I'll be like, ah, you know what? I do have a better word. Or let me dive into and look at the etymology of some words. Let me see if I can discover like the essence. Like, what are they trying to describe? Can I look that up in a dictionary? Can I look it up in a thes uh, thesaurus? Right? Like, it doesn't have to be executed at that time. Give it time to process. Do some research additional prior and post. And I think you'll be all right. So, yeah, man, thank you. Great question. Um, so let's do another question and here we go. This is, this is about customer profiles. So the question goes like this, when building out our customer profiles, how do you adapt for a B2B business? I'm finding that the background into, I'm finding that the background can be a bit tougher to gather from clients. They're not as engaged as, and B2B clients as a retail client might be for consumers? It's a great question. Um, and I'd like to open it up to the floor, right? Uh, have any of you guys had experience in facilitating B2B um, business personas? I have. All right, Bob, tell me a little bit about it. I wouldn't say within the core, but I think seven years working in, in B2B in healthcare, mm -hmm. uh, I actually started using a, 
a different format, the, the story brand framework. I don't know if anyone here is familiar with that. I am, yeah. Right? And mm -hmm. it was interesting because the more we talked about a distribution partner or a independent distributor network, we were getting down to story brand concepts that really align with core and customer profiles as well. We're talking about uh, their pain points. And we started to understand that at least I, I thought it was a revelation. I don't know, people here might think this is just foundational one-on-one, but for me, it was, it was really amazing to know that you're still dealing with people and that people don't buy solutions to external problems. They're buying solutions to their internal problems, how they feel. And no matter at what level, if you're a CEO or a, a purchaser, you've got some kind of pain point, you've got some kind of stress. And half the time when we, when we worked on developing messaging for B2B, uh, I, I actually just finished a, um, working on, on copy and messaging for a, a targeted market segment. And it was about them reclaiming their peak efficiency. Okay. And they felt they had lost something. They felt there was, um, that all, all these kind of scenarios around them. So maybe not in a sense, building a customer profile as much as understanding how they feel and equating that to the human condition. And that people tend, I think, I always thought of these companies as these behemoths that have no emotion, uh, that it's just selling widgets to other companies that sell widgets. But more and more, as, as I got into higher level conversations, uh, especially enterprise solutions, they were talking to them as people. So that's that's what I would say there. I love that, Bob. You know, I think the misconception is, and I believe that this misconception comes from a lot of like 20th century uh, ideas on marketing and advertising. Um, and that is that people buy these seductive products because of these crazy features and it's all about the svelte design and features and benefits it's it's features and benefits is the way that we negotiate that conversation but what makes us buy a product you know or buy a service is the human story behind it right we we are humans you know, if we, we look into it and, and um, Simon Sinek does a great way of breaking this down in his book. Um, I have all four of them. Start with why. You know, he talks about the ways that our brains are biologically uh, are the way that our brains biologically evolved. So from us, from like an evolutionary psychological perspective, we have our limbic brain, right, which is this core uh this core element in our brain that sits right above our lizard brain. So our lizard brain is all of the things like our fight or flight responses, right? It's, it's the instinctual nature and, and chemical reflexes that we have that allow for us to survive in crazy life or death situations. Ah, there's a lion, you know? Lizard brain is run, right? And we run. Like we see something that looks human but probably isn't human and could be a trap that's the uncanny valley that we see described. We see it more and more now about around CGI and robotics, these humanoid, humanoid forms that look very, very similar to humans, but something is just a touch off. That's your limbic brain saying, ah, that's probably a trap. That could be this alien trying to eat you, bro. Don't go near that thing, right? Then we have our limbic brain. Our limbic brain is all of our emotional responses, right? And then above the limbic brain, we have our neocortex. Our neocortex is what allows for us to have the technical conversations. Here's the challenge. Our limbic brain processes just emotion. It, there's no reason beyond this person makes me feel good. Something about this thing or this idea or this story brings warmth into my heart and comfort. These are feelings. Feelings are completely separate from what our neocortex function uh, uh, processes which is the language which is the details which is the ideas right and where our memories are held closest to us that happens in the limbic part of our brain around emotions 
So it's why we hear a song and all of a sudden we get this flood of emotion. Like, oh my God, I remember the first time I heard this, right? How many times we've been in the club? Girl, that's my song. Right? Everyone drives it. They could be drunk out, right? But that spark of memory, that inspiration, like, oh, I remember where I was when I heard Usher, you don't have to call, girl, let's get the dance floor, right? Like all of those things, it's because of our limbic brain. It's no different than the way that we build our brands and our products and our services. You know, the way that we connect, right, is on the emotional level first. It's why story is so important. Story gives you the why you should have this emotional resonance with an individual. Without that story, you're just a list of features and benefits. There's no emotion in that, right? People will say, hey, yeah, well, I bought it just because I needed it. Yes, convenience is absolutely a thing, but convenience doesn't build relationship. So the, whatever that thing is that you bought just built on that fact of convenience will never ever be able to be something that can develop into a relationship unless there is a story and emotion behind it, mm -hmm. right? When I look at some of the work that Maro is doing, and if this is your first time, Bob, you should probably, I think it's maybe episode 10 or nine, Motto presented some of the work that he's doing, and it's an incredible story. But what is really powerful about it is you can see the way that he's weaved emotion into this brand identity, right? That was what was really important. And, and I'm like, I'm sitting there because Maro, you know, as a business partner, he was in design and I'm watching him level up into adding strategies part of his work. And I'm like, oh my God, look at this story that you're telling, right? So I don't want to belabor that point anymore, but I definitely do want to open up the floor and, you know, to, to replay that, that question is, is um, when building customer profiles, how do you adapt for B2B, B2B business? Finding that the background can be tougher to gather with clients. They're not as engaged as a retail client might be for consumers, right? So for me to put it on a point, it is you connect. How do you tell the human side of that story? How do you understand the story behind the customer, right? What, what are the elements behind the motivations, right? Why is, he, why is he a potential client for this other business, for you? Not because of what his work is, but because of what he's driven to, do, to build, right? What are his like, deep motivations behind who he is and the kind of work that he's doing? Tell a story behind that. Learn to tell a story behind that. Find the details behind that. And then maybe we can find something really truly human to share. So uh, we've got a couple other questions. Uh, and this one is, what is the difference between a brand statement and core and a positioning statement? So um, Mary, welcome. Um, I was just gonna type, I, I'd add to the last question. Mm -hmm. um that like road mapping to to needs is a really great way to to um dig in deeper to the customer you know and so mm -hmm. you know them like what are they what are their pain points what are their needs and then hi dexter <laughs> and um and then map it to some sort of time timeline you know yeah yeah i love that mary thank you so much for that yeah um the next so the next question is the difference between a brand statement and core and a positioning statement. Um, so I'll echo with Jose had uh, mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. He looks at it as an internal, uh, an internal statement. Mm -hmm. In the way that I have used it, I've used it as a positioning statement, like a cultural positioning statement. So it's not external, it's not your mission, it's not your vision. But what it does is it gives you anchors into the culture and the kind of brand that you want to build. Um, and represent Mary. Yeah, uh, a cultural alignment tool, you know? Like, what are we here for? What are we doing? What's different between, be, who are our customers? What's different between us and the rest of the competitors out there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. from there, you can start to create like vision, mission, position. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Awesome, thank you so much for the feedback, Mary. Yeah, um, is that helpful? I mean, who do you, people want to dig in deeper than like how to do it or? Yeah, the floor is open, guys. People have more questions like related to that question, I'm wondering. Mm, let's see. 
we have difference between that. Uh, not really. We've got a so the last the last few questions that we have <clears throat> are the last two. Super cool. Uh, future of branding in the age of decentralization. And uh, after a client refers you, what do you do to thank them and how to keep up a good relationship? So uh, I can share. Let's let's do the um, let's do the client referral, and then we'll end it on the future of branding on the age of decentralization. So when my client refers me, what I do is I thank you and keep up a great relationship. Uh, I generally follow up with a personal handwritten note. Depending on how big the client is, I might provide you know like a like a fruit basket or like a gift certificate or something just as a give back. Um, there are times where I give uh, referral fees. So I'll give like 5% of the project rate to the person that referred me as just as a thank you. Um, if they're you know referring me clients on an ongoing basis, um, take them out to dinner. You know, honestly, it's like I treat them like friends, you know? Hey, let's hang out. Let's go have lunch or let's go have dinner, man. Let's go get a beer after work. You know, let's just go shoot the shit, right? It, it's really about thanking them on a personal level or finding a way to thank them on a personal level. Um, so yeah, that's what I do as a thank you. Um, but for the last question, and you know, it's 1223, so we'll end it on this note. And um, I just wanna share with you guys what we've got going on before we end this last question. So just a reminder, guys, um, you know, we're a company, you know, the system, and we're building a lot of really interesting things. The content that we're doing for you guys um, is actually a preparation for launch, and we're preparing to launch our accelerator program. So our accelerator program is to help young creatives, uh, young folks in design, um, young folks that are looking to develop their leadership skills in, you know, their creative endeavors. Uh, it's a program for you guys where you guys can learn the skills of core at a deeper level, um, where you can also learn the other two components of core that we're developing into a kit that of fire, which is about understanding your personal story and your personal motivation, um, and being able to tell your story, your superpower. Um, and articulate your expertise uh, very clearly. And then that of flow, which Mary is leading, which is about how we as teams can work together uh, in unity uh, towards a common vision. So the Accelerator program uh, will be sending out invitations this week. Uh, if you guys are interested, send me a DM, just reach out to me, let me know that you're interested in you know, getting involved with that and I will definitely make sure you're part of our soft launch. Um, and then lastly, before the last uh, question is for you guys to connect, post your uh, socials in the chat. You know, if you guys are on Instagram, if you guys are on LinkedIn, if you're on Facebook, you know, if you're on TikTok, wherever you are, uh, please share. Uh, you know, we're a community here and we support each other's creative, uh, creative endeavors. So with that said, let us end with the last question, which is the future of branding and decentralization. Um, Mary has a lot of thoughts on this. And so, you know, Mary, I'm thinking maybe we chat for the next few minutes before we say goodbye to the audience. Okay. What are we going to chat about? Decentralization. <laughs> the future of branding and decentralization. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, I think with this community, what we're seeing is that we can decentralize creatives, right? We can create a beautiful community together here online. You know, we're all remote, we're all in different locations and potentially can make beautiful things together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'd like to start there. <laughs> why, why it would be important to join Accelerator and join the system and, and you know, have the possibility of decentralizing the creative community. Designers are are in these in the hub, you know, all the tech hubs of the world right now. And and why does it have to be like that? 
Mm-hmm. You know, that's what I learned at Consensus a little bit around blockchain and, and working in a decentralized company where, you know, people in Romania, people in Chile and people in, in the Philippines and all over the world could contribute to the blockchain, um, you know, application solutions that, that Consensus was designing um, because the company believed that that's the future, you know, and mm-hmm. I think too. We don't all have to live in San Francisco to be a designer. You know, that was really interesting that you brought that up and how you mentioned it, you know, just creatives really in, in the in the realm of technology. Uh, I believe in when I think about design and designers, I think about the big D, BD energy, and that's big design energy. And this is design in all aspects of our life. This is not just about graphic design and a beautiful logo or incredible packaging or, you know, uh, incredibly refined and smooth UI, you know, the UX process behind some service that I purchased. It's more than that. It's also the architects that are designing our buildings. It's about the policy that's being designed and the laws that, that govern us and how we're able to live our lives. It's the, uh, it's the financial tools that are accessible to us, right? and how we can, you know, retain and transact, you know, our economic value. It's about all of those things. And I really think that the future is going to be like in the next hundred years uh, is really going to be impacted tremendously by the creatives that exist that are living right now. I think each of you are in a really unique space because I think that we're entering into this really powerful creative reson- uh, renaissance right? Like this is, this is the new creative and the new creative is not just a designer, but they're cultural influencers. They're driving community. They're driving knowledge and understanding, right? They're driving so much of the things that typically were reserved for institutions, right? I think that agencies are going to become less important. And then it's going to be more important to have very specific cultural niches, If I'm a logo designer, I'm a logo designer for millennial, transgender, rollerblade dancers, right? Like it's these super niche communities that you can really dive into really unique aspects of your personality and expression. And that you guys are gonna find profound ways to drive and influence your communities. And I think that is gonna be the future of creative. I think that's going to be leveraged by all of this incredible technological uh, opportunity now. With when we look at finance and learning, learning right? Did oh, you know? absolutely, right. So, that's going to be the foundation behind the communities. I think is going to be education. Yeah. You know, I, I'm yeah. I'm super excited for the future of branding. I'm sorry, Mary. I'm interrupting. Let me just shut up. No, no. What does everyone else think? Let's uh, hear from the crowd. Yeah. So guys, you know, uh, last couple minutes before we say adieu, but uh, is this resonating with you guys? Like, does this mean something to you guys? Are, are, are these words, like, you know, do they inspire you? You know, do you, do you see a future like this? Because I certainly do. The floor is open, y'all. I think um, if I can speak that I'm, it's kind of, I'm experiencing it right now through our community that I am in Manila, mm-hmm. but there's no limit to how you can co-create and collaborate with someone who's aligned with your values, what you believe in and what type of project you want to work with. And so mm-hmm. I believe that that's the treasure behind all of this is this wonderful community and I'm I'm really happy to see that a lot of new attendees uh, especially Bob when he shared something about B2B I really learned a lot and I think the magic also is in the stories of experience so thank you for sharing that mm-hmm. yeah Bob really glad to have you here man glad to be here guys good first time yeah Dexter, 
Um, yeah, I definitely feel like the concept of like community is definitely going to be you know, become more common, you know, because I feel like, you know, more as humans, we're getting into a space where, you know, we're craving a deeper connection than just, you know, this is just my coworker or someone I just see these days out the week, but having like a genuine connection and knowing people on a deeper level. And that comes from like, you know, being a part of community where you're creating a space for people to be, you know, open and be vulnerable and, you know, willing to share their losses and share all of those experiences together that people are able to, you know, grow and evolve from as a collective. Um, and, you know, really making that a part of culture. And it's like a model I'm seeing, you know, in a lot of different places, like, um, like Timbaland, the producer, he has a thing called Beat Club where he has a community of, you know, different producers and just different people who are a part of this community where they send in, you know, their music to listen to and they all critique and, you know, find inspiration in the things that each other does. And it's like, he doesn't have to do that. Like he doesn't really need it, but this idea that we've created this community of people to continue to learn and grow from each other. Um, and I feel like that's definitely a process to expedite, you know, growing and, you know, evolving um, when you're able to have access to people's wins and losses and take the lessons that they learned from that and then apply it to yourself. So the experience Infinity Stones, so uh, yeah, I think that's definitely going to be um, a model that's going to be, you know, that's going to define how people operate in the future, you know, community and collaboration. Love that, man. Thank yeah, you so much for sharing. Once you leave design school, like when does the critique happen anymore, you know? Mm. Just your client or something? That's, that's, not, that's not you want the critique from. Seriously. <laughs> right? I mean... All so right. Let's make that part of Accelerator. Done. All right. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a critique circle. I love it. Yeah. So guys, it's twelve thirty three. We're a little bit over. But today was a really powerful conversation. I'm really glad to connect with you guys. Um. Let's do the outros. You know. One thing that you got from today's conversation, uh, you can hop on the mic or you can post it in the chat. Um, but yeah, let's do that. I'll share mine. Uh, you know, my takeaway from today was just how aware and concerned like our members are in, with community, with, uh, with aligning with their clients, with the ability to have really powerful relationships with uh, their creative collaborators and the clients that they work for. Um, it's a super important concern um, and one that really dictates a lot of the potential for success. And um, I'm really glad that we're focused on that because that's where you start. It starts with the relationship. So thank you guys for that. I'll read a couple from the audience. We've got Bobby. His big takeaway from today was BDE. Big design energy. <laughs> and that we are sworn by light and positive energy. Well, yes, we are, man, when we have communities like this. Thank you, man. So I'm very happy because um, when Bob Stevens was talking about the past time experience, it's also, I, I found me also very related with experience in marketing, finding distributors and using another methods. And now with core really is uh, much, very much clear and it's more easy to help companies to find the spirit, to find the reason why they, they are existing, to whom they are focusing and the dialogue is more clear, transparent. And I'm very happy because also my business um, speed up and it's the same experience as yeah yeah so I mean people is calling so people feel comfortable and I love that you are creating the accelerator program to talk more 
personally to go more in deep on the projects uh, because I guess the final idea of all of us is increase revenues and and really to to be more creative in these new future changes that the world demands. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hania. For those of you that don't know, Hania is a scientist based in Germany and uh, she has some incredible insights. Um, love to have you here, Hania, as always. Uh, from Adriana. The future is about community, the diversity of learning and deep internal connections. Mm, really feel that. Thank you, Adriana. From that, take away, you're not alone. We are not alone. Thank you so much for being here, Nat. Mm. And then I'm gonna leave with this quote, guys. And this one's from Hania. Science is made by creatives too. I totally believe that. So guys, you know, it's Wednesday. I hope wherever you guys are at, you guys are in a great place. Um, I just want to remind you that you guys are loved, that you guys are powerful, and you guys can create anything. Thank you so much for rocking with us on Wednesdays with Office Hours. Next episode, next broadcast will be Friday. Same time, same place, and it's design therapy. So while on Wednesdays, we like to talk about brands and the facilitation of brand strategy and the execution of powerful creative design projects, on Fridays, we talk about the creator, the creative, um, and how they can become more powerful for themselves so that they can be more powerful for others. So as always, you know, we ask you to like and subscribe, uh, connect with us on the interwebs. We're on all of the places, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. You can find it at We Are The System, system with no E. You can find myself, Keone Chong. That's Chong, like Chichin Chong. We've got Mary A. Gribben and the powerful Jose Caballero. We use the hashtags Core is Magic and We Are the System. And we can't wait to connect with you in our next broadcast. So until then, take care, y'all. Peace. Yeah, thank you. Keone. Thank you. Hi, Keone, Mary, and everyone else. Thank you guys. Appreciate each and every one of y'all. Y'all are powerful. Raphael, you're going to have to hop on the mic next time, brother. I will. <laughs> no rush when you come to On me. Friday. Yeah. Friday. I'll do that. Gemma. Gemma. Ciao, so, babies. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ¿Cómo está? Hola. Muy bien. <laughs> qué bueno, qué bueno. Gemma, ¿en dónde estás? Ah, in, in Senada, Mexico. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay Becky, Rico. glad to have you with us. Patrick and Phil. <laughs> Noah, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Oh, very good. Natasha, <laughs> always glad to see you in the room. Dexter, of course. Edik Emic gang, what's up? <laughs> 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 and on that note, we out. Peace, y'all. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>